Cooper High School students were let out of school early due to a small fire on Tuesday. Reporter Sonia Goins has more on what happened. Shannon, Plymouth, Golden Valley and West Metro arrived on the scene around 1130 this morning after someone saw flames shooting out of the girls' bathroom. Students and staff filed out of the building and headed to the football stadium as firefighters worked to put out the fire. The West Metro Fire Chief says there was a lot of smoke and they are still trying to ventilate the building. It's a low level right outside of the entrance, the foyer, and it was girls back there. One student says the fire happened during one of the lunch periods. He says a smoke filled the hallway right away. Some girls went to the bathroom and like it was like three or four girls and they had went in there and I guess one girl had lit the toilet paper on fire and then they threw it in a trash can or something and then it started off as a little fire then went off. The state fire marshal is on the scene trying to determine an official cause. In New Hope, Sonia Goins, CCX News. All right, thank you, Sonia. Lawmakers reached an 11th hour deal on a response to the opioid epidemic. It's expected to make Minnesota the first state in the nation to establish a separate fund for opioid addiction treatment. Eric Nelson joins us now with reaction from a Brooklyn Center lawmaker who has long fought for this type of legislation. Eric. Shannon, for Senator Chris Eaton and others, this was a huge political victory. Eaton received congratulations via text with Governor Tim Walz today, who assured her he will sign the bill. Eaton spent countless hours pushing for this. She lost her daughter 12 years ago because of an overdose. I was pretty wrung out, but I'm just starting to really feel it that, you know, I don't have to spend my life <laughs> day and night working on this bill anymore. Um, now we can just start making sure it's implemented correctly. So um, it's a, you know, it was a rough road. This bill could generate over $20 million from a fee on drug companies that will pay for treatment options. However, left out of the bill was funding for naloxone, a drug used to treat overdoses. Eaton was disappointed by this and believes access to naloxone might have saved her own daughter. In negotiations, it was on the spreadsheet for um, 200000 every year. And... Uh, Somehow the revisers got it to 200,000 for the biennium, so they lost 100,000 a year. So we need to fix that in the um, next year. Now this bill sets limits on prescribing drugs for severe pain, but does allow doctors to override that cap if they determine it's necessary. Shannon. All right, thank you, Eric. Meanwhile, the legislature adjourned with a special session likely later this week. While legislative leaders have a deal in place, the full House and Senate still need to approve budget bills. According to a House DFL spokesperson, a special session could start Thursday or Friday. Of the 10 major budget bills, only one passed both chambers Monday night. A local radio station is assisting a Robbinsdale Elementary School with its school lunch debt. At this time, we have um, $3,800 of current lunch debt um, that is part of our building. And then in addition, we have over $4,000 from the previous year that hadn't been paid off. 67% of students at Lakeview Elementary are on free or reduced price lunch. School staff say there is often a lag time when parents are notified whether their student has been approved for lunch assistance. And during that time, parents have to pay the full cost of lunches. And that's when the debt starts to add up. It's a very common problem and as a district um, we have chosen to feed the students regardless of whether they have money or not. We try and work very closely with families. On Monday, City's 97 Radio started a GoFundMe account to help pay down lunch debt. They hit their goal of $4,000 in just two hours. Most of us try to get some sort of exercise in every day. Reporter Meredith Hackler shows us a different way of walking. Renewing spirits and reducing stress. We're only swinging the right side. Meet Linda Lemke, also known as the Nordic Walking Queen. She travels all over the state to teach people the proper way to Nordic walk. So Nordic walking is usually defined as fitness walking using a pair of specifically designed poles. While this might just seem like walking, Lemke says there's more to it than meets the eye. They think they know how to walk 
And so the first thing we do is we kind of prove that maybe they aren't walking the best way. So we work on striding and swinging our arms and having an active walk, and then we add the poles to that. Anyone can Nordic walk. It's even common among those who used to be runners. We get people who were runners and they can't run anymore because they've hurt their bodies. And so Nordic walking provides a Nordic walking high, just like a runner's high. So they kind of like that rhythm, that heart rate and stuff that they can get into. Nordic walking started in 1997 in Finland when the creator harvested the benefits that Nordic skiers receive from using their poles during summer workouts. Since then, the activity has become popular all over the world. And as soon as I push down and back with that pole, I'm going to activate core muscles and back muscles and shoulders and triceps and hands. And it actually even activates your brain in coordinating. And so it's good for diminishing the onset of dementia and Alzheimer's as well as all the other life-threatening diseases that we have out there. Nordic walking burns 20 to 40 percent more calories than your average daily stroll. Lemke hopes by spreading her knowledge of the activity, more people will get out and exercise. Got to get out and move. Movement is your daily prescription and if you're going to walk, you may as well be walking with poles. Make it the best walk. In Maple Grove, Meredith Hackler, CCX News. A Brooklyn Park-based Boy Scout troop received a unique honor this week. Troop 542 celebrated its 54th anniversary by holding a court of honor for their 100th Eagle Scout. They watched Daniel McHenry receive the highest achievement attainable in Scouts. If a person really puts uh, their work into it, it can be easy if they know what you're, they're doing. It does take a, a pretty good dedication because there's a lot of service hours involved and a lot of leadership they have to demonstrate and um, really get to that maturity level and that uh, dedication level to get there. He's already been a head coach in the NBA, but now it's official. Ryan Saunders will be the Minnesota Timberwolves head coach going forward. Saunders was introduced as the Wolves head coach by President of Basketball Operations Gerson Rosas Tuesday morning at a press conference. Saunders was officially the interim head coach for the final 42 games of last season when he took over for Tom Thibodeau. 2004 White's out of high school graduate Saunders talked about the work that needs to be done with the team going forward and about what his father, the late Wolves coach Flip Saunders, would have said to him today. He'd say, you're your own man. Um, you know, I acknowledge that, you know, my father's a big part of my life, big part of my career. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm Ryan Saunders. And uh, for that reason, it's, um, he'd tell me, continue to be your own man, trust yourself. And, uh, you know, trust, trust the people around you. You know, I look forward to the challenge ahead. And, and I, I truly believe in what, what Gerson um, spoke on. You know, it's actions over words. And, uh, and we need to and we will, um, you know, prove that over time with you guys and, and continue to get better and better. Um, so it's a, I, I acknowledge today's a thrill, but there's work to be done. Well, more with Ryan Sauters later this week on CCX. It's section playoff time in high school softball. Two local squads went head to head in the opening round of the section 6-4A tournament. Armstrong and Hopkins meeting. Bottom of the first inning, two outs. Hopkins' Lauren Granger powers a solo home run to left for a 1-0 Royals lead. Next up is Parker Stoddard, and she lifts a high fly ball that gets over the fence, and it's 2-0 on back-to-back -back home runs. Macy, sh Macy shatters Shrilly, doubles off the fence, and the next at bat, she comes around on the opposite field double by Morgan Hawley to make it 3 to nothing Royals. Bottom of the second inning, Granger comes through again. That hit scores Annika Krauser, and the lead is 4 nothing Royals. Bottom of the fifth, Delaney Lindstrom with the hit to score Anisa Dysert, and it's 6 to nothing Hopkins. An inning later, Stoddard unloads again for a two-run homer that puts the Royals up 10-0 and ends the game early. Tournament continues Wednesday in Edina. In boys lacrosse, Maple Grove was looking to bounce back from three losses in their past four games, and they hosted a good Blaine team. Late third quarter of this one, and the Bengals' Joe Lang rifles a shot in for a goal to give Blaine a 5-4 lead after three. But the Crimson rally in the fourth. Jaden Cruz passes to Drew Heisler, who scores and ties the game up at five. Under five minutes to play, the Kafer passes to Heisler, who's wide open in front. Maple Grove is ahead six to five. Heisler scores three goals in the fourth quarter, four in the game. Maple Grove wins it seven to five. 
The Maple Grove softball team enters this week's section playoffs as the top seed in section 5-4A. On this week's Sports Jam show on CCX, Jason Malillo profiles Crimson senior pitcher Ava Duick. Here's a clip from that story. Ava Duick is one of only a handful of players in the history of Crimson softball that can dominate a game from the pitching circle and from the batter's box. We had Kaylee Sadler here who had an outstanding senior year for us. And then we had Sydney Smith who, you know, had a fantastic career here with us as well. You know, she's right in the mix with those with those uh, two other kids. Duick is five foot nine with a long body and she uses all of it to dominate opposing hitters. I'm not like the most muscular looking person ever. I'm not huge. Um, so I think a lot of my pitching motion, I rely a lot on my levers, which like my elbows and my wrists and then my legs too. Um, but as far as like approach goes, like going into one specific batter, I usually try and get ahead. Um, I'm not always great at that, but I think getting ahead gives me a lot more tools to work with as far as getting deeper into the count and then like seeing the batter's weaknesses so that I can use that to my advantage. You can see the rest of that story and more this week on Sports Jam. It airs through Wednesday at 3.30, 6.30, and 9.30 p.m. here on CCX1. That's all for sports. More news in a moment.